Cars.coza. down the pit exit, out onto Swartkop in one of my dream cars. This is the Clio V6 Renault Sport. I'm having a good day. <laughs> So hello and welcome to the inside of one of the rarest cars in the world. This is a Phase 2 Clio V6 Renault Sport. There are only a handful in the country. They only ever made 1,309 of these, which makes this rarer than a Ferrari F40. Just, they made 1,311 of those. <laughs> so they scraped in there. I wonder if Renault did that on purpose. <laughs> So as you might have noticed from, you know, looking at the outside of this car, it's a slightly hotter version of a Clio, uh, which was a basic run around hatchback. And one of the reasons why I love this so much is it's just so crazy. The French just thought, let's take one of our basic little hatchbacks and put a three liter V6 in the boot. <laughs> And then, oh, well, well, how do we get air into there? Oh, no, we'll just widen the car by about three meters and put massive air intakes on the side. That'll solve that problem. And so you end up with what is, in my opinion, one of the best looking cars ever made. Full stop in the history of cars ever. This is one of them, without a doubt. And what I'm discovering today is it's one of the best sounding cars ever made. 4,000, 5,000. <laughs> but this radical design did create some problems. This car had a legendary issue and it was the turning circle. Now, to give you an idea of how bad it is, the turning circle of a Volkswagen Caravelle is 11.9 meters. The turning circle of a Toyota Hilux is 11.8 meters. This car's turning circle, 13 meters. That's full lock. The pit lane at Swatkop is about 11 and a half, 12 meters wide. So a Hilux would be able to turn, but me in the Renault, not a chance. <laughs> However, this inconvenience was a minor price to pay for a car that made all of its competitors look like shopping trolleys. So let me take you through some of the numbers. Back in the early 2000s, this came out with 188 kilowatts, 255 PSs and 300 Newton meters. It had a zero to 100 time of 5.9 seconds. And let's compare that to a modern day hot hatch, one of the most exciting hot hatches that's been released for as long as I can remember, the Toyota GR Yaris. Now that has a little 1.63 cylinder turbo and it's got more power and torque than this. But if you look at this car in its context, it was the most powerful hot hatch in the world at the time. This was really leaps and bounds ahead of the competition. When Golf GTIs were making 120 kilowatts, this thing was up at 188. So I'm sure you're all waiting for me to tell you what it's like to drive. Well, you're watching me basically getting used to this car. I haven't spent all morning before I'm talking to you driving the car and getting used to it. So let's experience this together. Right, turn one at Swartkorps is pretty tricky. 
I've seen a couple of cars go off there, so you don't want to hit that too hard. Down to third, down to second, very tight corner this, basically a hairpin. On the throttle, probably a little late there. Use all the rumble strips, 6,000 RPM, 100 k's an hour, 5,000 RPM in third, that's 120. Let's see if we can ring fourth gear out. Hard on the brakes, use some engine braking, turn it in. There's a little bit of lift off oversteer there, but nothing too scary. Definitely feel that that heavy engine at the back was negating that lift off oversteer. Down to second, 90 degree right hander here. Let's get on the power a little early. No, it's really planted. I mean, I was kind of expecting this thing to be swapping ends on me. Now, I must point out my number one priority when I borrow a privately owned car to make a film is not to make a film it's to give the car back in one piece <laughs> that is my number one priority making a film come second so i'm not really going to hoot this thing at 10 tenths i would like to not have to fill out an insurance claim form at the end of today but let's have some fun On the power full throttle, use a little bit of the rumble strips, six and a half thousand RPM, we're up to 100 k's an hour now, but because this car is not turbocharged, I'm not worried about it getting on the boost mid corner, let's use a little bit of engine braking there. I don't think I've ever driven such a short performance car, or well, at least not after the GR Yaris. It is giving me that same sort of feeling, but as involving as the GR Yaris is, it actually feels a bit clinical compared to this because in here you've got the engine in the cabin with you and because it's behind you it kind of makes you feel like you're in a supercar or a mid-engine sports car you've just got this wonderful baritone noise coming from behind your head and it scrambles your brain a little bit. You think to yourself, why is the noise coming from back there? That doesn't make any sense. I'm in a hatchback. But this whole car doesn't make sense. And that's why I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> the car is just communicating with you all the time. This is what the gearbox is doing. This is what the engine's doing. This is what the front tires are doing. This is what the rear tires are doing. It's like you're having a conversation with the car the whole time. It's so different compared to modern sterile hot hatchbacks. Honestly, driving a Golf GTI compared to this feels like going to a spa for a massage. Allow me to give you an exterior tour of the car. I'm first going to pop the bonnet for you because obviously with the engine being in the back, you do need some load space. And so Renault have provided it in the front. There's a little pull tab here to pop it open, a little safety latch. And there is your cargo space, really. I mean, it's not massive, but you could get two sort of soft weekend bags in there maybe i don't know if there's a sort of car you'd go touring in anyway so that's probably just for the odd trip to the shops maybe your laptop bag come around to the side with me so zen and headlights which 20 years ago was pretty cool pretty impressive your fronts are 205s and your rears are 245s but what, what's quite interesting is if you stand at the back of the car you can actually see that the front track is wider than the rear track even though the rears are a lot wider than the fronts in terms of the wheels and that just gives it a bit more stability makes it a bit less oversteery which when you've got the engine in the back is quite important obviously functional air vents that's the only way the engine's getting any air i really like the fuel filler cap that's a nice detail and you also find these rivets actually inside the car so they sort of carry on the theme but come around to the back because i want to show you what's left of your boot when you stick a three liter v6 in the back of your clio and um yeah that's it sort of maybe maybe space for one macbook pro also the tailgate doesn't go very high it's sort of 
I mean for, I don't know, for hobbits. And on top of your engine bay is actually a really, really thick sound insulation shield. Got massive foam underneath. And then underneath that is a heat blanket. And trust me, you need it. And it really, really works. <laughs> Uh, please bear with us. We are on a racetrack, a working racetrack. It's very loud here today, but I wanted to show you the cabin. And it's not particularly different from a normal Clio. I mean, there are some nice blue metallic accents. Those are quite nice. Alcantara and the gear sock, obviously a special gear knob, but the steering wheel doesn't look particularly special. The key is not particularly special. I mean, it's a nice Alcantara on the door, but the biggest clue that you're sitting in something really, really unique is the size of the sill. Look at that. I mean, it's almost a good 30 centimeters wide. One of the widest sills I've seen on any car, actually. And then, of course, you're sitting here looking at this dash and you think to yourself, well, I, I'm just in a normal Clio. And then you started for the first time, like I did this morning. And the noise comes from behind you. You think to yourself, yeah, okay, I mean, something pretty special. <laughs> I would never get tired of that, ever. so good. I love it when I meet my heroes and they don't disappoint. This is so good. It's like a proper little race car. Now, Renault absolutely nailed it with this one. And I think dynamically speaking, where you have to be awake with this car is under braking. Because it's so short, because all the weight is at the back, when you're hard on the brakes, it is quite twitchy. It does feel like the engine wants to swap around and overtake you, basically. But other than that, you can, you can lean on this thing pretty hard. I was expecting it to be a lot more tail happy than this. Look, if you're absolutely on a 10 tenths, then perhaps the driving characteristics become a little bit more extreme and you have to be, you know, a bit of a better driver than I am. But it's sort of seven tenths it's actually quite a confidence inspiring car. But I think this car is one of those cars that's more than the sum of its parts. Because it has such a unique layout, because it's a big engine in a small car, because it's naturally aspirated, manual gearbox, low seated driving position, it just all adds up to create this really, really wonderful and unique experience which I've never experienced in another car ever. And that is what makes this car worth it. Makes it worth every cent in my opinion. <laughs> this has made me immensely happy. <laughs> uh, so I want to share something with you, dear viewers. When I was about 17, 18, the second time, I don't know if you've heard of this guy, Jeremy Clarkson, have you heard of him? He's been, you know, been around, does some car stuff. Anyway, first, first time I ever saw him doing his job, he was in a Ferrari Enzo, and I said to myself, that's what I want to do for a living. And then the second time I ever saw him doing his job, he was in one of these. It was a great film, I think it was the very first episode of the new Top Gear. And then I said to myself, I really want to do that for a living. And now here I am filming a Renault Clio V6 on a racetrack. And it's just the most wonderful moment. <laughs> oh, it really is. <sighs> okay. I think let's call that a day. Thanks very much for watching. Whack that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next one.
Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Now, did you know that Cars.Coza has a brilliant app? It's actually one of the most popular apps in South Africa, and that's because it's actually really bloody good to use. You can save your favorites. So while you're shopping, you know, if you're taking a couple of weeks to shop, you just save your favorites so you don't lose them. And it's also a brilliant way of finding new car specs and pricing. It's incredibly detailed. I use it all the time. The link to the app is in the description below. You can get it on iOS and Android and it's in the Huawei app gallery, I think it's called. Yes, that is what it's called. Cool. Alrighty. And I'm done. Good. Okay.